Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are we ready for the Word of God this afternoon? This morning, excuse me. Are we ready for the Word of God? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 40 as we look at, continue to look at the Word of God this morning. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40. We read from verse 1 to 12 already earlier and we're going to continue from verse 12 to the end. Isaiah chapter 40. If you're there, say Amen. 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 Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Measured heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Or as his counselor has taught him. With whom did he take counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as the small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its peace sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman molds an image, the goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever, who's, whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you? From the beginning, have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted, Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth when he will also blow on them and they will wither. And the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy, the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their hosts by number. He calls them all by name. By the greatness of his might, and the strength of his power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait on the Lord is there anyone waiting on the Lord this morning but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. 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 This morning we're going to look just for a few minutes at a topic titled, How Great Is Your God? Amen. 
Just ask yourself, how great is my God? Come on, ask yourself. I want to hear you. How great is my God? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning because you are good. And we come, O oh God, like the psalmist, O oh God, as the deer panted after the water brooks. Even so, O oh God, our souls pant after you. And we pant after your word this morning. And we pray, God, that your word would come in all its power and all its glory. And God, that every need will be met. That God, you would speak to every heart, O oh God, as we need to hear from you. And God, that like Pastor Samson prayed earlier, O oh God, or declared earlier, that God, every need, we will leave home, we will leave here better than when we came. Amen. We will leave here better than when we came. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Before we continue the word, I just, real quick, I forgot to make um, a critical announcement. And so let's do that real quick before we go into the word. Um, it is a joy this morning to announce to the entire church congregation that Pastor Samson and Pastor Precious, amen? Amen. Will be planting a new church, amen? amen. In Seattle, Washington, amen. A new parish of the redeemed Christian Church of God. I thought we would clap more than that now. Yeah? Praise the Lord. And as we speak, plans are already being made. Um, and very soon, I know that Pastor Samson and Pastor Precious will start to meet in Seattle. They will start a fellowship group. Amen. Amen. Um, but we want to make sure that we announce it to the entire church congregation that everyone is aware so that we can continue to pray for them. Amen. 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 Will we pray for them? Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's Amen. pray for them. And as opportunities arise to support them physically um, in various ways, uh, we will bring that to our attention. Amen. 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 Um, and so next week, Sunday. So the Zono Conference is Sad Friday and Saturday in Portland, Oregon. And by the way, if you plan to go for that, um, please, you need to see me after the service. Um, I need to confirm who's going um, because I will be providing a final head count this evening. Um, so if you're going for that, please make sure to see me before you leave today. And just let me know how many people are coming um, so we can make proper plans. Um, but after the conference next weekend, here in Victory Court, by the grace of God, at 6 p.m., um, our provincial pastor, Pastor Lake Yojo, will be with us to conduct a special service inaugurating that parish. Amen? Amen. 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 So the entire church body um, and certainly all the workers are welcome. Amen? Amen. It's going to be a short service, but we're going to inaugurate that parish formally, officially. Um, and from that moment on, that parish... The true riches of the kingdom of God, amen, amen. amen. will be recognized in the redeemed Christian church of God as a parish of the redeemed Christian church of God, amen? amen. amen. Uh, now, Brother Samson, Pastor Samson will still be with us, amen, before they start their Sunday morning services. That will most likely be well into the new year. Um, but we just believe in God that he will do a mighty work, amen? Amen. 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 And we are well able to take the land, amen? Amen. So we're going into Seattle by the grace of God. Amen. And so I, I just really, really encourage us. Let's continue to pray for them. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to encourage um, Pastor Samson, Pastor Precious, and the entire family as they undertake, undertake that great work. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How great is your God? How great is my God? Amen. 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 The 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah is famous in and of itself. It's famous because it has some of the favorite Christians of many Christ favorite verses, excuse me, of many Christians. I'm sure as I read that passage, many of those verses resonated. I could hear some of us saying amen. Favorite verses. The world famous oratorio. Handel's Messiah, composed by the composer George Frederick Handel, sets many of the verses of this chapter to music. But the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, is famous for another reason. It is famous because it is the beginning of the second part of the prophecy 
of the prophet Isaiah. You could divide the book of Isaiah into two parts. Isaiah chapter 1 to chapter 39. And then subsequently Isaiah chapter 40 to the end. And so Isaiah 40 is the beginning of that second part. Some people have called the book of Isaiah a Bible in miniature. That the entire Bible is, is, is somewhat captured within the, the, the chapters of the book of Isaiah. Let me, let me give you some examples. There are 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. And there are 66 books in the entire Bible. Amen. 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 The first 39 chapters of the book of Isaiah may be compared to the Old Testament. They primarily deal with, with, with God's judgment of sin. But starting in chapter 40, through the end, the next 27 chapters of the book of Isaiah can be seen to parallel the, the 27 books of the New Testament, which deal and emphasize mostly the grace of our God. Are you following me this morning? Amen. 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 The New Testament part of the book of Isaiah opens with the ministry of John. Read Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. It talks about the ministry of John. I won't have time to go to that this morning. And it closes with the new heavens and the new earth in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17 and chapter 66 verse 22. And in between there's so many, many references to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as Savior and King. And so the book of Isaiah can be seen as a mini book of the Bible or miniature of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Now, of course, the chapter divisions of Isaiah were not part of the original, um, original inspired text. Amen. Amen. But the comparison is still very interesting. The comparison is still very interesting. And so we see in the book of Isaiah, in this chapter 40, Isaiah begins to build the theology. He begins to build a theology for the messianic hope of God's people. He begins to paint a picture of hope for God's people. See, chapter 39 ended with a prophecy to King Hezekiah of the judgment that would come. Hezekiah, there were some emissaries that came and Hezekiah foolishly took them in and showed them everything in the temple of God. And judgment came and said, and the judgment essentially said, the king of Babylon is coming. But Isaiah 40 opens with hope. Isaiah 40 opens building a messianic hope. And I want to tell somebody this morning that when you belong to God, you can always have hope. Amen. 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 When you belong to God, you can always have hope. In no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, God is in the business of giving his people hope. Amen. Amen. God is in the business of giving us hope. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, declares the Lord. To give you a what? A hope. And a what? A future. When you belong to God, and I belong to God, how many people belong to God this morning? We can always have hope. It is God's will to give us hope. God wants us to have hope. He wants us to have hope. And so chapter 40 started, which Pastor Kevin read earlier. Comfort, yes, comfort my people. Comfort my people. I said it earlier, the, the, the Israelites, Judah, had just received announcement that Babylon was about to conquer them. This announcement would have been a bitter blow. Because they were just escaping or about to escape the clutch of the Assyrians. And so in the midst of that hope or in the midst of that news, Isaiah says again, the Babylonians are coming. But God didn't leave them without hope. God doesn't leave us without hope. Amen. Amen. God doesn't leave his people without hope. God wants us comforted. And what is the reasons? What are the reasons that we can be comforted? Number one, because our iniquity is pardoned. Amen. Amen. If you belong to Jesus, if you've surrendered your heart to Him, then your sins, your iniquity, are pardoned. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. 
That is glorious news. We can be comforted because we know that our sins are forgiven. Chapter 2 of Isaiah 40 gives us another reason why we can be comforted. Another reason for hope. It says, the warfare is ended. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended. Amen. 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 At this very moment that Isaiah spoke, the battle may still have loomed. Can you hear me? God is saying the warfare has ended, yet the battle may still have loomed. If they could even, there was even an army, excuse me, even though there was an army arrayed against them. Even though battle came against them, as far as God was concerned, the warfare had ended. Amen. 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 What is that battle that you can still see this morning? What is that thing that you're still trusting God for today? I bring good news to somebody. I bring good news to some family. I bring good news to the church of God. The Bible declares the warfare has ended. Amen. And as far as God is concerned, it has ended. Amen. And so we keen by faith. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith. We stand on the promises of God. God says we are more than conquerors. Romans 8, chapter th verses 37. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Who does what? Who loves us. And as it concerns you and your family, because you're a child of God, the warfare has ended. Amen. Because we are children of the Most High God, the warfare has ended. Amen. Because greater is he that is in me. Come on, point to yourself. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. So don't worry what you see. Don't be moved by the situations and the circumstances around you. As far as God is concerned, the warfare has ended. Amen. 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 Greater is he that is in me. So how great is your God? How great is your God this morning? How great is your God this morning? How great is your God this morning? Amen. 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 Do you believe that your God is greater? Yes. Do you believe that your God can do all things? Yes. Let us consider for a minute just the greatness of this God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to run through this chapter, verse 6. The voice of God said, the voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. We're going to skip to verse 8. The grass withers. The flower fades. Because the breath, I'm sorry, excuse me, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. We're talking about our great God. How great is your God? His word stands forever. His word stands forever. Amen. Amen. God's word has endured centuries. And that is not an exaggeration. God's word has endured centuries of manual transcription. Centuries of persecution. Centuries of ever-changing philosophies. And yet it remains. God's word stands forever. God's word was written on material that perishes. God's word was written before the advent of the print and press. And yet, it survived intact. It survived accurate. It didn't lose its style. It didn't lose its correctness. Amen. Amen. It didn't lose even its very existence. We're talking about how great is your God. He's preserved his word through the ages. Just so that it can come to you this morning. Amen. He has preserved his word intact through the centuries. Just so that it can make an impact in your family. Amen. How great is your God? How great is my God? In the year 303 AD, the Roman Emperor Diocletian, he decreed, he demanded that every copy of scriptures be destroyed in the Roman Empire. How great is our God? His word stands forever. Needless to say, he failed. 25 years later, the Roman Emperor Constantine commissioned a scholar 
to prepare 50 copies of the Bible. And not only to prepare them, they did so at government expense. Amen. 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 So the man that thought he could de destroy and, de and wipe out the word of God at the expense of the government that he was part of, at the, at the, ex at, as, at the expense of the government that he had, he had reigned in, the Bible was even further produced. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Voltaire, the French skeptic, he died in 1778. He said that 100 years from his time, Christianity would be swept from existence, would pass into history, and that the Bible would be a forgotten book. What audacity. Only 50 years after his death, the Geneva Bible Society used his press and his house to produce stacks of the Bible. Amen. 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 We're talking about how great is your God. When the French monarch proposed the persecution of Christians in his dominion, an old statesman and warrior said to him, Sire! The church of God is an anvil that has worn out many hammers. Now listen to me, behind this anvil that is the church of God, behind this anvil that is the power of God, is your God that is greater than anything. This anvil that has worn out so many hammers. We just looked at a few examples this morning. Behind this church of God is your God, is your great God, the God who reigns in heaven and on earth. Let's continue. Verse 9, O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Somebody say, Behold your God. Behold your God. Behold your God. This message is not one to just take a passing glance. It's not saying just take a passing glance at God. It speaks of a long term mission to know the greatness and the character of God. Behold your God. Behold your God who comes with a strong hand. Verse 10. Behold your God whose arm shall rule for him. Behold your God whose reward is with him and his work is before him. Behold your God who will feed his flock like a shepherd. Who will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them into his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Behold your God who is God over all creation. Verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hands. Behold your God. Who is so great that he has the ability to measure the vastness of the earth. He can measure the size of the earth. Amen. Amen. The God that is so great, he created everything. He created all that we can see. The galaxies, he created them. Everything we can see, he created them. Amen. Amen. And with God, it's not just about size. It's also about smarts. Amen. Amen. Our God is not just about size. Amen. He is wise. So great is his wisdom and his intelligence that he can number all the dust of the earth. He can number all the dust of the earth. Scripture teaches us that he knows the hair on our heads. The number of them, he knows them. Amen. Amen. Now we know that man cannot measure even the number of dust in a small space, tell you accurately the number of particles of dust in a small space, not to mention the dust of the whole earth. This God is mighty. This God is awesome. This God is great. This God is, is far above anything we can ask or imagine. Amen. He is awesome. Verse, we're going to skip through. All the way down to verse 22. Isaiah says, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Let me ask you a question. How did Isaiah know in his time that the earth is secular? Amen. Amen. Have we thought about how did Isaiah know? This is, 
long before the theories that proposed that proved that the earth is circular. And yet way before his time, Isaiah declares he sits above the circle of the earth. Isaiah could declare that because his God is great. And because his God revealed it to him. Amen. Amen. There are mysteries that God will reveal to us. Amen. That is how great our God is. Amen. 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 He sits above the circle of the earth. He brings out the host by their number, verse 26. He calls them by name. He brings out the stars from the heavens. He brings them out one by one and he calls them by name. That is how great our God is. We know now that there's billions and billions of stars. And yet that doesn't face our God. He's not intimidated or confused or mistaken. God knows them by name. So the astronomers are still counting and classifying the stars. But your God has described them. Amen? Amen. He has counted them. He has ordered them already. That was a project that he finished a long time ago. And so the scientists are still, the astronomers are still working on that. But your God has finished that. And he says whenever he wants, he brings them out. He orders them. He commands them, come out. Amen. Amen. Are you getting a right picture of how great your God is this morning? Yes. Are you beginning to understand, maybe again, or even for the first time, how great your God is? How great your God is? This God is mighty. He is awesome. He is wonderful. He is holy. He is big. And he is on your side. And he is on my side. Amen. Amen. He is for me. He is not against me. He is for you. He is not against you. And I want you to believe that this morning. I want you to receive that this morning. The greatness of God is not just an academic exercise. It is not just a theoretical project. It wasn't preserved throughout the centuries just for to tickle our imaginations. The greatness of God and the power of God is available for you and I in this 21st century in which we live. The greatness of God is right here with us in the midst of the grind of our daily lives. It is right here with us as we go through situations and circumstances. Verse 31 of Isaiah 40 says that, 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 that we can fly. Let me read it. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Notice the progression. They shall soar like eagles. Then they shall run and not be weary. And then they shall walk and not faint. The progression seems to be reversed, doesn't it? If we were going to put that in, in increasing order of, 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 of intensity, first you would walk, and then you would run, and then what? You would fly, and yet the word of God comes and says that you will soar like an eagle, you will walk and not, you will run and not be weary, you shall walk and not faint, and I'm telling you there's times when you will soar in God and you will fly, and there's times when you will walk and not be weary. But there's times when you will just walk. And that is the power of God. That is the greatness of God in you. That you will just walk and not faint. That the strength just to take that next step in the daily grind of life. The power just to, 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 to live and then the power just to overcome on a daily basis. It's all you need. And I'm telling you this morning, the word of God comes and says, no matter where you are, whether you're flying, whether you're running, or whether you're just walking, that his greatness is enough for you. Amen. That his greatness is enough for you. Amen. And so maybe you're just walking this morning. Maybe that's all you can do today. Maybe that's where you find yourself. In this Christian journey, 
I say to you, my brother, I say to you, my sister, don't faint because your God is with you. Amen. Amen. Don't faint because your God is with you. Amen. And he is greater. Your God is great enough. He is great enough to see you through. He is great enough to get you running. He is great enough to get you flying. But receive his grace today. Receive his grace today. Receive his grace today. And don't ask like the children of Israel in verse 27. They asked the question. God, have you abandoned us? God, don't you see our troubles? One translation says it that way. This translation I'm reading says, My way is hidden from the Lord. My just claim is passed over by my God. Don't say God, don't think God has abandoned you. Don't think that God doesn't see your struggle. Don't think that God doesn't hear your cry. Don't, see, don't think that God doesn't see, see your fight. Perhaps you're here today and you're weary or you're lacking in strength. Maybe you're here today and, and, and you would say, even as a vigorous young person, I have stumbled badly. God, I stumbled badly. You're tired of the pressure. You're tired of the work or the lack of work. You're tired of living under the weight of whatever expectations. You're tired of being single, maybe. Maybe you're here and you're, you're even tired of being married. The word of God comes to you this afternoon through the prophet Isaiah. And it says, you shall run. Amen. And it says, you shall soar. Amen. It says that your, God is your strength. Amen. God is your strength. Amen. Even the young men grow weary. Let's read it together. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to who? The weak. And to those who have no power, he does what? He increases strength. To those who have no might, he increases strength. So guess what? If you're here today and all you can do is just walk, I have good news for you. You are a candidate for God's strength. Amen. It is you exactly that God is looking for. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no power, He increases strength. He increases strength. He increases strength. Many frets and fears would vanish. Many things that ail us and bother us would, would simply fly away if we would just focus on how great our God is. What do you know this morning? Have you not known? What have you heard of your God this morning? Have you not heard? Many of our fears and our frets would be gone if we would just focus on what we know and what we have heard about our God. If we would just simply take his word for his word as it is and not think that he's speaking in some future tense or speaking of some glory that will be revealed in the sweet by and by. But let us hold on to God at his word. Let us hold on to what we know about God. Let us hold on to what we have heard about God. Let us believe God at His word. Let us make His word bigger than the things that come against us, than the fears and the threats that want to overwhelm us. And as we do that, we begin to focus on His glory and His power begins to be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. And His power begins to be revealed in us. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He neither faints nor is weary. 
His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who wait on Master Jesus shall renew their strength. Those who wait on Jehovah, those who wait on the Creator, those who wait on the, who wait on the God whose word stands forever, they shall renew their strength. Listen to me, God's word stands forever. That means that God's word can outlast any situation. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Are you listening to me this afternoon? Yes, yes. God's word can outlast any situation. Have you ever heard somebody say, wait and see? Amen. Amen. Come on, say to your brothers this morning, wait and see. Wait and wait and see. Come on, say it with conviction, wait and see. Wait and see. Come on, say it with determination, wait and see. Wait and see. Because your God and his word will outlast every situation. Yes, yes. yes. Will outlast every problem. Amen. Will outlast every circumstance. Amen. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Somebody ought to be strengthened this morning. Amen. This word is a word. I told you, God, when you love God, when you serve God, you should always have hope. And so the word of God comes this morning to bring hope into a hopeless situation. Amen. Oh, I'm reminded of that verse that says, the tree that is dead. The tree that is dead. At the scent of water. At the scent of the word of God that goes forth this afternoon. It shall burn again. In the name of Jesus. And I decree by the power of the Most High God, everything that is dead in your life, everything that is dead in your home, everything that is dead around you, at the sense of this Word of God, it begins to burn again in Jesus' name. Amen. I said it must burn again in Jesus' name. Amen. Wait, I say on the Lord. Hope patiently in Him. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Don't let your circumstances confuse you. Don't be confused. Your God is still great. Amen. 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 Don't be confused. Your God is still in control. Don't be confused. Your God didn't make a mistake. Sometimes we look at things that have happened to us and we begin to wonder, God, did you make a mistake? No, he did not make a mistake. It was part of his grand plan and his grand design. The man Joseph said, it was God's plan. You meant it for evil, but God sent me ahead of you. All the while, God was walking. Can somebody hear me? All the while, God is walking. Amen. All the while, God is walking. Amen. All the while, God is walking in your home. Amen. All the while, God is walking in your family. Amen. All the while, God is walking in your marriage. Amen. All the while, He is walking on your job. Amen. And He will bring it to pass. He will establish it. Amen. He will make it happen Amen. for the glory of his name. Amen. 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 And so this word of God comes to somebody. It comes to me. I receive it for my life. Amen. And be it unto you according to your faith. Amen. It comes unto you that your God is great. So how great is your God? It's the question before us. Somebody say the greatest. greatest. How great is your God? Greatest. Come on, say it now. How great is your God? Greatest. How great is your God? Greatest. Muhammad Ali thought he was the greatest, but he had it all mixed up. Amen. How great is your God? Greatest. How great is your God? Greatest. So you ought to be confident. You ought to walk out of here today with your chest just a little bit puffed up. Amen. Amen. You ought to walk out today with your shoulders just a little bit square. Amen. Amen. You ought to walk out today with, a, with, with what they call a, a swagger. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just a little swagger because your God is in control. Amen. Amen. 
I don't care what the situation is. I don't care. Listen to me. There's things I'm dealing with. There's things I'm believing God for. There's things I'm holding on to. But even in the midst of that, we believe in Him. Even in the midst of that, we take Him at His, at his word. Even in the midst of that, we refuse to grow weary. Yes, 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 yes. We refuse to be discouraged. Yes. We refuse to be intimidated. Yes. We refuse to be afraid. We say, God, we know you are with us. Yes, yes, yes. We know you are the greatest. Yes. Amen. Amen. We Amen. thank you, Lord. Yes. All over this place, I want to give you the opportunity to just declare your, good, your, your, your confidence in God. Yes, 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 yes. As I invite Brother Justice and, and the worship team, I want us to rise up and, and, and just declare that our God is great. There is nothing that God cannot do. And I don't mean that as a figure of speech. I don't mean that, that oh, yeah, there's some things he can't do and there's other things he can't. I, I really mean it. There's nothing that God cannot do. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And so this morning, this afternoon, as, as we cry out, please feel free to take whatever posture you feel comfortable with. If you want to lay on the floor, if you want to kneel down, if you want to lift your hands, if you want to stand quietly. But I want you to connect with your God again this afternoon. I want you to reach out to heaven. Even as we spend just a few moments waiting on him. If you're here and, you, and you're weak, maybe you barely made it to church today. You might even be saying, I, I, I really don't know, Pastor, honestly, I don't know how I made it to church today. I want you to press into Him. I want you to reach for Him. I want you to say, God, I am weak. I am a candidate for your strength. God, I don't have might this morning. Increase my strength. Increase my strength. Increase my strength. Increase my strength. Oh God, increase my strength. Increase my strength, oh God. We reach for you, O oh God, today. You're the Lamb.
just say, Pastor, just stand with me in agreement today. It could be one person, it could be the entire church, but you're here, you would just say, just stand with me in agreement for some issue, for some circumstance. If that's you today, just lift your hand so I can see you. Thank you. 